Hi, this is Mike from Wizard Run, and you're watching Loud TV. Hey guys, tonight we are with Mike, uh, yeah, for a new amazing project called With Us Run, and uh, yeah, it's a great, great surprise. Cool, thank you very much. Um, so basically, um, Chris, the keyboard player, and I have been, um, we've been friends for quite a long time, and uh, we were always discussing working together on like a kind of a extreme metal project. Um, I guess, I don't know. For, for a few years now and um so um last year me and um eric the drummer were on tour together um he was playing in necrogoblicon and um you know he's a fantastic drummer so i just kind of walked up to him one day and i was like hey you know do you want to be in this band with me and chris we, we didn't have a name or anything then we just knew we wanted to play something a bit heavier um and he was like yeah sure so um i kind of we, we got back off the tour. Uh, I started writing a bit of music and I sent it to Chris. Uh, he liked it. He showed me some lyrics that he had kind of been sitting on for a few years. Um, and then we chose the name. We were kind of discussing like name and direction and stuff. And uh, we chose the name Wizard Friend. It was actually something um, he and I had come up with probably al almost 10 years ago. Uh, we were just sort of sitting around drinking and he was asking me to start a band so I could go on tour with Ailstorm or Glory Hammer or something. Um, and I was, yeah, yeah, I'll call it Wizard Throne or whatever. And I, I think I wrote a couple of songs back then, but they weren't very good. Uh, I couldn't find the members. So Wizard Throne was kind of, the name was from like 2012 or something like this, but the, the music is new, you know. Um, but anyway, you know, once he had the music uh, and we had Eric on drums, uh, he contacted the other guys, uh, Matt and Jake. Uh, we started talking together, and pretty much on day one, we started writing, you know, riffs and yeah, and that's it. So it's in your mind for years, I would say. Uh, the name was, um, and not necessarily the music, but the idea to play something a bit heavier, you know. Yeah. The music was the music was mostly new. So, um, yeah, the music, the music is, uh, not so far from, uh, Glory Hammer, uh, but it's maybe more brutal and, uh, yeah, it, yeah. Reminds, it reminds me, um, uh, old Balsaga. Yeah. Yeah. They're a big influence. The, the UK band that I, yeah, uh, I was listening to to this band in the late uh, nineties, and um, yeah, with um, a lot of guitar uh, solos and uh, quite uh, chill on bottom, I would say. I'd say they were probably the two um, biggest influences. Biggest influences, to be honest. Um, I think Basic are probably Chris's favorite band, and Chill on the Bottom are probably my favorite band. So I mean, there's a few other influences as well. Um, Old Man's Child and Dissection, Hypocrisy, and um, even uh, Lost Horizon was an influence for me, the old Swedish power metal band. Um, but yeah, those are probably the two main influences. Uh, Emperor as well was, was a big one. But, um, yeah, I, I think, I guess, I guess it's similar to Glory Hammer in the way that it's a bit melodic, but um, I think the music is quite, it's, it's a lot more complex. Yeah. And obviously happier, as you said. So, how did you? Was it easy to find all the members and uh, there are tons of guests also on the album? Was it easy to yeah, I mean, uh, achieve? The, yeah, the, the lineup we have is the lineup we wanted originally. Um, like I said, it was kind of me, Chris and Eric, and then Chris contacted Matt and Jake. Um, and we've all worked together or toured together or done something together. You know, there's lots, lots of crossovers between all of our projects. Um, so we, we kind of knew we wanted this lineup, you know, like, for example, Matt is a great songwriter. Um, Jake is a great songwriter, but he's also a fantastic vocalist and bass player, you know. So it was, you know, the dream team, I guess. Yeah. Um, what about the, the production? Because the sound is uh, the sound is amazing. So everything is made in, uh, in the UK? Uh, 
I recorded the guitars. Um, I did my vocals, but the kind of deaf growls, um, the low ones, um, and a lot of the sort of uh, keyboardy parts. But uh, basically, it was recorded last year in the middle of um, the pandemic. So we, we had to kind of do everything in home studios or, or with uh, friends at their studios. Um, and then everyone kind of sent their parts to me, and I kind of like the drums were edited by someone else. Um, but I edited a lot of the vocals, I edited uh, my guitars and stuff. Uh, and we sent it to uh, Nino Lorena in um, Helsinki um, at Sonic Pump, and he kind of you know, glued it all together and made it sound massive. Um, so it's a weird way of doing things, you know. Normally you just go to a studio and everyone records, and it was being recorded in like five different countries or something like this, you know. So we, during the pandemic, uh, we have lost a lot, a lot of uh, things like uh, concerts, but we have gained also a lot of new projects, which is cool, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I noticed today actually. Um, I think it's one of the guys from uh, Catatonia. I just saw an advert. He's now doing like a black metal project as well. Or I listened to it. It sounds cool. And I listened to it, and I was like, yeah, this is definitely a lockdown project, you know. So do you think you could have launched this project without COVID and pandemic? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Because when, when I asked Eric uh, about drums um, and when I first started writing the uh, first track of the album, um, I think maybe coronavirus was in the news, but only, you know, only in like China, like, oh, there's this like a uh, bad flu going around or something like this. Um, so it was kind of a faint whisper on the wind at that point in time, you know, and then like, three weeks later, after we started talking about Wizard Throne, I, th I think it maybe was like first day of, um, first day of lockdown or the day before lockdown or something. Um, I can remember me and my housemate were going for a walk and, um, all of a sudden my phone's gone crazy because, uh, all the shows are being cancelled and stuff, but I think it was also the same day where. We were discussing like uh, the website and the uh, the logo and the artwork and stuff. It's a wizard friend. So I remember my phone was going crazy with stuff about Corona. But at the same time, it's going crazy with ideas for wizard friend. <laughs> it, was, it was a little bit before, um, but I guess the I guess the pandemic made it easier to focus um, because nothing else was happening. You know? We were just stuck at home um, writing music. Um, what about the the concept in uh, Hypercube uh, Necro Dimensions? Uh, are you the one who deals the the lyrics? Uh, I was responsible for some of the lyrics. Uh, a lot of them were Chris. It was probably like 70% Chris, 30% me or something like this. Um, it's not really a concept. There, there is like a a theme, I guess, or like a you know universe in, in which the song takes place, but they're not really linked. There's, you know, there's no storyline. It's more like each song is... It's, It kind of like you said with Belsikov, it's like each song is like a miniature story, but it all happens in the same place or in the yeah. same universe. So the action takes place in, yeah, in the universe. And yeah. uh, you are talking about a um, Tyraxia planet. I, will, uh, I suppose it's, it's a, a pure invention from, uh, from yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's just fictitious, you know. So, yeah, what about the, um, the, the topics? Because I've, I've read the lyrics and I think you are the only band, the only uh, band, yeah, to say, behold the macroscope, macrocosmic, cauterizing black hole quantum thermodynamics. <laughs> wow. Yeah, <laughs> I guess that was, that was a pretty extreme lyric, yeah. Yeah. So what about the... Um, um, It's it's made of uh, mathematics, and uh, we can see also math on the on the, your first video clip. Yeah, well, actually, um, Chris studied uh, mathematics when he was at university. When he was, uh, I don't know, I guess like 19 or 20 years old. Um, and this is just before Hailstorm became, you know, popular. Uh, he was he was studying uh, fluid dynamics, I think. Um, And he actually, when I sent him the first piece of music, 
um, the lyrics he sent me were um, for the title track, uh, Hypercube Necro Dimensions. You know, he didn't have any music. He just had these lyrics that he'd written when, when he was a teenager. And I guess he was listening to black metal, but he was also studying maths. So he was like, you know, combining the two. Um, and when he sent me the lyrics, um, you know, I kind of read them and I was like, this is perfect, you know, like this is crazy and no one else is really doing anything like this. So um, from there on, when we started writing the lyrics for the rest of the song, we tried to, uh, try to keep it in a similar kind of theme, you know, and it just evolved into a few different paths. Are you, of course, you are a fan of uh, sci-fi movies or books. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what are your favorites? Uh, well, actually, it wasn't so much a. Um, actually, yeah, I guess a couple of couple of bits that I wrote were um, influenced by uh, stuff like Blade Runner in a way. But um, the ma the main influence that wasn't musical for me was um, at the time I was writing a lot of the music because it was obviously lockdown. I was playing um, Final Fantasy VII for probably the millionth time since I was a teenager, and um, it's kind of like a sci-fi story in a way. Um, and also has a great musical uh, soundtrack as well. So, um, you know, there, there was a lot of influence both in the kind of theme and, and the music that came from that. For me personally, um, I know that Chris is influenced by, I think uh, Arthur C. Clarke was, was an influence in some of the lyrics. Um, and then there's also, you know, there's a kind of strong kind of Lovecraft vibe to some of the lyrics as well. So what about the, um, the topics? I, uh, it seems that uh, on some songs, you are quite inspired by nature, like black metal, you know, in uh, the Norwegian, mm. you know, I would say. So it's, um, is it one of uh, the main inspiration? It's, uh, it's a nature uh, on other planets and uh, you try to, to describe a new, a new universe? Yeah, I guess. I, I, I... We weren't really thinking about maybe um, nature per se, but more like the kind of um, forces on planets, you know, like, uh, you know, perhaps stuff that is completely different to what's around us. And we were just trying to create like a vibe of this like hostile alien kind of universe, you know. And gods too. Yeah, gods, ancient gods and gods that live inside black holes and <laughs> stuff like that. Do you, yeah, do you believe in that uh, uh, type of, uh, yeah, you know, all the alien uh, theories like uh, in the um, Force uh, Indiana Jones, maybe, you know? Uh, not not really. But I mean, I, I guess when I was younger, you know, I, I was quite interested, you know, when I was like a teenager, I was interested in like all of this kind of stuff and, um, you know, this kind of spiritual stuff as well, you know. Um, and, and one of the thing, one of the things we always kept thinking about when we were writing the album was um, kind of going back to when we were teenagers and we would listen to bands and uh, get excited. You know, you just heard like Dimmy Borgo for the first time when you're like 13 or 14, and your mind just exploded. Um, so it was important to capture that kind of vibe and to kind of think like, you know, you're a teenager and you're hearing all this music for the first time. You know. What, what's the music you want to hear? And I'll try and imagine it and then quickly try and write it down. And Yeah, we can, you know, I, I agree with you. We, we can feel the, the Dimu Borgias touch on uh, some songs, I would say, in the, especially in the, in the keyboards, you know? Hmm. Yeah, some of the older Dimu albums, maybe. Um, so is it a, a real band? <laughs> And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We um, we have. Um, I mean, we're already trying to plan how we're going to um, fit in some shows, like some tours and stuff. Um, and I already started writing a little bit of music for uh, whatever happens next. You know, would it be it's easy? A bit straight. To, would it be Sorry, easy to tour outside UK for in the next months? Um. Well, I mean, we all have other bands as well. And to be honest, right now we have um, so many shows and festivals and stuff to catch up on because everything has been pushed back from, 2000, uh, from 2020. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, so we, we have to keep in mind that we have, you know, that for some of us, these are our jobs, you know, so we have to, we have to do this first. Um, but I think next year, you know, we, we're looking to, we're looking to try and fit with thrown in somewhere. Okay. Um, because I think it's, it's probably important we do some tours um, before we do festivals. And also, you know, next year's festivals, they're all like same lineup from two years ago or one year ago, whatever. So. 